Hello everyone, welcome to the weekly Jenkins Infrastructure Meeting. We are the 23 of November 2021. So today we have Mark, Hervé and Hai, um, the availability. So let's start with the announcement. Um, today, weekly release 2.322 uh, is currently running. So not released yet. Uh, let's see the next. So the, we had a uh, minor issue that it would cover after the announcement, but that should be good before end of day. Is there any other announcement? Okay, let's go. Let's start by what is the issue with the weekly release? <laughs> <laughs> so um, thanks, Mark, for um, letting us know that uh, there, there were a build failure during the weekly release. Um, the root cause is the GPG binary absent from the agent where the release is running. Um, so we have added in IRC, I will transplant on the notes the reason. The reason is because during the, we did a, an update of a bunch of our Docker images, including Docker packaging, and the release um, uh, the release agent environment is using always the latest version. So using the latest, one of the side effects of our changes was to follow good practices on the Docker file, used to define that image. And some dependencies like GPG were not explicit. They are not defined explicitly on the Docker file. They are present on the image or they used to be because there were implicit dependencies of other packages. So we have to release a new version with this element. We are currently checking. It sounds like we need to add Git and OpenSSL at least as explicit dependencies, just to be sure. The reason is because the release shell script is using explicitly these commands. There might be other, but that should we are uh, we have almost covered all the scripts. Why not using the latest image version from last week? It's because it's using latest, and before that, we were not using regular tags, and the previous tags is eight months old or something like that. So the risk is that we will use an image with outdated dependencies. So unless someone is against that, we should be able to deploy an image in the next 30 minutes. Yeah, that is that is no harm whatsoever. If we if we had to delay the weekly, the packaging of the weekly release a day, it would still not be harmful. So that's, I, I agree, no way should we go back eight months to a tagged image version. Just one thing, it sounds like we have a tag from the 7th of October on the GitHub repository. Uh, but I propose we don't spend much time and we fix the issue. This, this is a weekly release. It would have been an LTS. I would have proposed to, to find a version for last week, but I propose we go ahead. Is it okay for everyone? Yes, absolutely. Good choice. Okay, okay so let's wait uh, after that meeting and continue the effort. Uh, next point. Jenkins IO outage. So last week we had a, an outage on Jenkins IO and uh, all the documentation, blog posts. So everything under that uh, website. So we still have a post mortem to write down. The root cause was the Nginx Elm charts that we, uh, L, uh, that we upgraded in production. And even though it was a patch version, it has a side effect due to security CVE fixed in Nginx. And we add to, the, the consequence was once upgraded, it deleted the ingress rule for Jenkins IO. And after some times, uh, it started to be uncached from Fastly. The CV fixed on that term chart is uh, some code block on Nginx are forbidden on that version when you are using some characters that correspond to configuration item in Nginx that could be used to extract secret or do a wrong thing, like calling a Lua script or a simple if block. And alas, we had a if block on the annotation. So thanks, Hervé, for the work on that part. You were able to uh, remove 
or move away at the image level for Jenkins IO, at the container level, some of these configuration items and remove the missing ones. That helped us to keep using the latest version without the security risk involved. So thanks, great work, but we are sorry for that outage. The post-mortem will the details will be published. So the outcome is that we, we have to be careful even with patch version of dependencies. <laughs> That's the morale of the story because I wasn't, and Hervé told me you should, and he was right. <laughs> Thanks for that effort. Uh, is there any question about that topic? So, will you, in terms of the postmortem, will you do it mm -hmm. offline, kind of written thing, or offline, online hybrid? What's your preference? So, I would like to to start again the postmortem routine we had a few months ago. That will be during two weeks an ACMD document that will I will write down. I plan to do it today and send it to the mailing lists, both developer and infra. We have two weeks where people could comment, propose edits, ask question, and in two weeks without any comments or if everything is solved, uh, we will froze that document into the Jenkins infra slash documentation repository in a markdown format and updating status Jenkins IO. There is an incident in the history of incidents. So we will have the link to the post-mortem on an incident for later. Is, does it seem good to you? That means collaboration during two weeks, question, comments, and then if everything is okay, then we can move, over, move away. Mm -hmm. Yes. Cool. I'm gonna add something to the bottom of the agenda. Sorry, I yep. continue. Go ahead. Uh, next topic, just a note about the TLS certificate for repo jenkinsci.org that uh, should be upgraded. We mentioned that last week. So since last meeting, we have done everything required to help KK. So he is able to take over the name. Um, and now he should have generated a new certificate or he should be able to. We haven't heard from KK yet. and. I was uh, planning to send a reminder today and it sounds like Gfrog roasted us and ask uh, KK, uh, what's the status? My proposal is to wait uh, at least tomorrow. If KK doesn't answer to Gfrog, we will uh, send, in, um, send him an email, either if you still want to do it or we can take over again and do it by ourselves and exchange with Gfrog if it's uh, too much for him. Uh, Hervé, it's your topic, Kubernetes 1.20 upgrade for AKS and EKS. So I, I've, um, I've read uh, the different uh, change log for this uh, version. And uh, as far as I know, the only uh, attention point uh, will be a default uh, timeout uh, period uh, of one second which has been defined for the bot probes. Uh, previously, it was already at one second, uh, as I could find in uh, some article uh, from uh, 20, uh, 2018. But uh, the, this requirement uh, wasn't uh, respected. It was a bug in, uh, in Kubernetes. In Kubernetes. So uh, now uh, this one second uh, default timeout uh, is on port. So we'll have to monitor uh, our application to see if uh, some of them uh, will need uh, this um, parameter uh, specified with uh, an uh, increased uh, timeout, uh, especially Jenkins. But uh, we don't know yet. We'll have to test but uh, apart from that i i've not seen anything uh, uh, specific uh, or problematic for the upgrade so i think we could uh, maybe uh, set a date for this upgrade uh, this week or next week if it's okay for you so and if if Thursday or Friday are viable for you, they are certainly low activity days uh, in the in the U.S. because those are bank holidays. 
So it would be an opportunity, yes. Yeah, now no requirement, but but just as if if it's convenient for you, then Thursday and Friday happen to be bank holidays in the US. And I, at least for one, will not be doing Jenkins work on Thursday. So that Minerva, your call, um, select based on your availability. Usually with Olivier, we were doing that early morning or morning in the uh, Europe. Yeah. Um, so we have a full day if something goes wrong. Yeah, so Thursday morning should be good. So if it's okay, um, then you will have to send an email on both mailing lists to let people know and open a pull request to prepare the operation on status Jenkins IO. And additionally, a fourth point will be uh, telling uh, telling that on the IRC and every instant messaging channel that we could use for infrastructure or communicating. Did I miss one, Mark, or do you have other location oh, where those, we could? Those are great choices. Oh, community.jenkins.io might also be a good place to to note it if you didn't mention that already. It's a, it's it, it doesn't do any yeah. harm to say it there, yeah. and it's another another forum where someone might see it. Hervé, are you expecting are you expecting downtime, or is this one that I I don't uh, recall Kubernetes upgrades? Do they typically take a downtime, or is it rather it's a rolling thing where a piecewise upgrade usually works? The problem will be uh, the application uh, needing more than one second to respond to the probes. And I don't know how to test it. Uh, OK, so we, we predict there probably will be downtime. Yeah. Yes. OK, there will be. got it. Um, okay. And also, we depend on the sum of like the LDAP is the most critical part. And the LDAP is not scaled horizontally, because that's an LDAP system. And since it depends on the persistent volume, it depends on how Azure will reschedule the container. So okay. sometimes it works in a few seconds, and sometimes it takes like 10 minutes to unmount the volume on one machine, mount it on the other, and then schedule. So the container is scheduled and waiting for the mount to be present with the data. And that one is really var uh, variable. So we, okay. we should expect a cut. Most of the LDAP usages like Jira or CI Jenkins IO have some caching. However, we should say by default, it will be, uh, it, we will have an outage of uh, an expected, uh, let's say the service will be done for a few minutes during the restart time. Great, okay, thank you. And yes, and also, yeah, well, as you said, Hervé, that will be the second risk with the if probably we might broke some services. But the other services are uh, horizontally scaled, so we sh that should be okay, like the plugin site or others. Okay, is there any so possibly third or Friday next week. So beginning of December, sounds good for both, uh, for everyone. Oh, oh, so it's, it's, you said Thursday, oh. Friday, next week. I thought Hervé was saying this week, oh, within this week, two or three uh, days. Did I misunderstand Hervé? Uh, if it's okay for me, I don't, I don't see what, uh, why just, uh, Apart from the short announcement, I don't see uh, yeah. why you're waiting. Mm -hmm. Great. So this week, and this, this week, week is great for me. Yeah, yeah that's that. That really is. So long as, so long as I'm not I'm not needed, and I don't think I would be any help. I I could hinder if if that's <laughs> I could get in the way, and I could. <laughs> That, that, that could be a great excuse if you want to get away from uh, a world of family diner, though. But... <laughs> ah, sorry, I have a Kubernetes to replace. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, so this week, okay, so, uh, uh, that was me that misunderstood. Sorry for that. I've, uh, I don't know if you, I can uh, see the link to your great notes. If you want. Mm -hmm. um, 
Okay, uh, the next topic is just one mention. That's my main task for this week. Uh, I'm working on a new pipeline library function uh, on the global pipeline library system that we're using. The goal of that library will be to centralize uh, the make file and the pipeline steps when we use Terraform. So then uh, the goal will be to use that pipeline library for our current Terraform automated job, meaning AWS and Datadog. Both of them will need some slight changes. Datadog is something created by Olivier and Tyler with Terraform three years ago, and it's still working, which by the way is really cool. And AWS is the new one that Garrett and I created this year. So the goal will be to, to have the same way of manipulating both because they have slight differences. So there is, there is interest in the open source community around the US federal government in um, Terraform automation in pipeline. So what you're doing, I may come begging you a month or two from now to help and coach on, hey, could this be made used a little more broadly even? Certainly you'll do it for our needs, but we may come beg for your skills or your knowledge to how could we help the, the open source piece of the US federal government if they want to use it. Fair. Um, one pointer that Hervé and I discussed also this week on that area, thinking about using the HashiCorp Terraform cloud that could also alternatively take care of the sharing state and running these jobs, mm -hmm. uh, because there is a free plan that should suffice in our case. And that could be interesting also if for open source code, they have programs for open source if we need more. I, uh, Hervé, you told me that the, one of the limits of the free chair is the amount of uh, users available to access that. So meaning the admin of the infrastructure that should suffice for us, but yeah, maybe we need a bit more. So that could also be interested to have in mind. If it's okay, I propose that we start keeping our items so we manage everything from scratch with the risk of losing our state. And then we can think about uh, checking on HashiCorp services because that will help maybe less code, everything. But since we already have some code running, the goal is to go step by step. Is that okay for you? Or do you think that maybe we could start already with HashiCorp? I don't have strong advice on that part. So that's why I'm asking. Can't we import the current state in uh, HashiCorp cloud? Mm, good question. Good question. Um, I think it can be possible. I don't know for sure, but yeah. Ashikorp Terraform Cloud import Terraform State. That will be something. To check. Okay, I'll take care of that part. Um, next topic, CI Jenkins IO. So Maven 3.8.4 and Git 2.34 are generally available. Um, they are almost available on CI Jenkins IO. Uh, the, we are having issues on building the, the virtual machine template only the Azure with Windows. Uh, there is an issue on Azure with the replication of images and internal API error that I'm trying to get over. But for Amazon, all architecture, all OS, and all the Linux on Azure as well, um, it should be OK. Uh, the reason why we went so fast, it's because the previous Maven 3.8.3 is not available anymore for download, at least for the binary which failed uh, our builds. Mm. Um, and we have the same for Git, but for Git, it looks like there is some kind of LTS line and latest line, I don't really know. The previous version we were using, 2.33, is not available on the package repository on Ubuntu that we are using, but there is still the 
dot 25. I, I guess there is something to be checked there. We might have been uh, too quick on using uh, that way of installing Git. But I mean, it's not breaking the use cases on CI Jenkins IO because we have a VM template. Uh, but yeah, that was to mention. So in that case, uh, the idea is to provide this version as soon as possible to CI Jenkins IO and send an email to the Jenkins developer list once it's been done. Does it sound good for you? It does, yeah. Mm, is there any question on that topic? Cool. Um, one note, the Docker, the campaign that Hervé and I did on trying to check all the Docker images built inside infrastructure for our own usages uh, and taking care of the dep tracking dependencies of these images, depending on parent image or binary like, the, like Maven, the like gates that we don't know. The goal of that campaign was to check that we were able to use the latest update CLI uh, manifest version. And we have the five uh, repository that have been listed in the meeting notes that are still to be checked or updated. Maybe nothing to be done, but we have to check them. Uh, we haven't tracked, uh, we, I haven't listed uh, all the repository we did. The first one was the Elm chart. I've did a, a huge amount of work on tracking the chart version, the Docker images version. So each time we have Docker image used internally, it's automatically updated uh, with update CLI, which is really nice. Uh, uh, one last thing, uh, just about the costs. Mm. Um, so it sounds like we will be able to eat uh, uh, to, to not hit the 10K limit on AWS. Right now, the, we have used uh, uh, 6K and we should be around uh, 9.2K this month. The goal, as a remember, will, we still need to be under the bar of 8K per month. So there are still some work to do on that part. Just to mention, because everything was on previous meeting there, and uh, we are working on, uh, on this element. Uh, then, as we as for reminder, the goal is to move PKG Jenkins IO to another cloud because it's 3K of bandwidth. So we have to check the cost on uh, Oracle Cloud and Azure just to have a comparison or a backup plan. Azure costs are still the same, 8K. So that's cool. We are under the limit. Last topic is election voting system, Mark. Yeah, so unfortunately, the, they had a hardware crash on the system that we use to run our voting system or that we, we rely on to do the voting. We don't actually run it, they do. Cornell University in um, upstate New York uh, hosts that service and has hosted it for years for us. Unfortunately, they had a hardware failure. Um, uh, the professor who is aware of it said on his tweet reply to me that they were working on it but i haven't seen anything further and it is definitely still offline so my yeah. hope is that it will come online i don't see any way for us to replace the service because it's got um, the 40 plus votes that have already been recorded so we're hoping that they've got good backups like professor myers indicated they have backups and that they're able to restore the hardware and that the holiday weekend in the US doesn't, and it being a university holidays tend to be a little longer in the US than typical business holidays. So the danger is we may be offline and have to do something more in terms of extending the voting period for the elections or something like that. I'll, okay. I'll bring it to the governance board uh, for discussion if today by email. Okay. Thanks for the checkup. Is there anything that the team could help by hosting a service or providing a machine that someone else would manage or? Well, if I'll check with Professor Myers, I'll tweet to Professor Myers to see what, if there's any progress today. Uh, I doubt that that would help because we'd have to have access to their backups. 
we'd have to have access. You know, it's the the data is much much more valuable to us than the service itself, right? The the voting data for this running election is intentionally secret and is intentionally, um, you know, private. And we don't yeah, really sure. want it to not be private. We like that it's private. That's intentional. Good point. Okay. All right. Thanks, Mark. I don't have other topics. I don't know for you if it's a few others. Done. Cool. So let's go back to fixing the wiki release then. <laughs>